retired being the way I was um, myself with, with, with my career in boxing and stuff I knew what path I went on and in a weird way it kind of worried me thinking what's he gonna fucking do now well it's worse worse than you could probably imagine to, to be honest with you because I mean you know we, we touched on how you know addiction and drinking and you know and you know being so devoted to your sport something you've done all your life and all of a sudden it's gone and everything like that but it wasn't it wasn't just that, you know, um, after the, um, the I thought Floyd Mayweather had got beat, started feeling really, really depressed, really, really down, because, I mean, everyone would say, well, it was only Floyd Mayweather, what are you worried about? It's Floyd Mayweather, but no, I went over there thinking I was going to beat him. Mm. It wasn't just for my biggest payday, and you know, because it was Floyd Mayweather, I was, thought I was going to beat him, so when I came back, I was canceling all my appointments, all my, 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 speaking, my speaking events, didn't want to, I was embarrassed, I thought people were walking down the street laughing at me. That's how I felt. Uh, but then I made a comeback, City of Manchester Stadium against the Sky, and it wasn't my best performance. People saying he should retire. <clears throat> and then I fell out with Billy Graham. You know, mm. I fell out with Billy Graham, didn't we? You know, um, and we ended up in court with Billy Graham over money and everything like that. And thankfully to this day, me and Billy Graham, you know, realised the, the reason why we fell out, you know, and, you know, and um, we're mates now, so it's, so it, but it was great. But I fell out with Billy Graham um, so I got beat by Mayweather, didn't perform well at City, mm. fell out with Billy Graham, then I fought, boxed Malinagi, best, great performance, first man to stop him, best performance since Costa Zoo. So then I was up again, then I was up, yeah, brilliant, then I fought Manny Pacquiao, then mm. I was down, and then I fell out with my mum and dad. I uh, didn't speak to mum and dad for eight, eight years, and um, thankfully was, was now... It mom, was it your mum and dad? My mum and dad, yeah. yeah me, I spoke to your mum a lot, um, kind of on... Facebook. Well, it was my dad, my dad initially, dad and then obviously my mum stayed. Yeah, yeah. She, took she my was. dad's side and whatever. But I mean, thankfully, I'm happy to say, you know, uh, if this this year, funny enough, to like maybe six, seven months ago, me and my mum and dad are made up now, and yeah, it's yeah. great. You've, you've seen it on the Instagram. We're up spending time with the family and the kids, grandkids, and good times, you know, because me, me mum and dad got poorly over Christmas, and I thought, listen. You know what's happened in the past. You know, yeah, let's yeah, put yeah. the past behind us and let's try and move on. And that's what I did. But going back from your first question, Chinny, when you know what was it like? You know, when you retired, it was it wasn't just the fact that Pacquiao had splattered me and that was that. No more boxing. It was all that. Not speaking. So I'm thinking to myself, I haven't got boxing. You know what I mean? I can't. I'm not fighting anymore. I haven't got boxing. I haven't got my mum and dad to share it with. I went on that massive journey with Billy Graham, and I haven't got Billy Graham to share it with. What the fuck am I doing here now? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. the what's my point of doing here now? Yeah. So I went to the pub, uh, and for like a few years, it was like just just I thought you know tried to kill myself, slip my wrists, tried to slip my wrists loads of time, couldn't fucking do it. So I thought to myself, I'm gonna just I'll just drink myself to death. Like, I haven't got the bottle to do that. I'm gonna yeah, drink yeah, myself yeah. to death. So I was in the pub all day, all night, every day, every night, and what in order to keep myself drinking more, then I started taking Charlie. Yeah. And so then, it, and then it just before you know it, then it was, uh, then it got to a, like a dark place, and it took me a while to, to shake it off. But I mean, it was, it wasn't just the boxing. It was all that stuff going on, you know, in, in the background. That, what brought you out of that? My, mine was with <coughs> when I lost the kids. The kids were sick <coughs> from me. That, that kind of started my journey of recovery. It was, a, I was fed up to death to think that I can't have them in my life. That's what kind of turned it for me. That was my turning point. Even though it was dark, it, it was always dark for me. Drinking, using, dark, dark, drinking, using, boxing, rubber, music, I whatever. Think it was always under the surface with me from a young age, you know. From a young age, I used to, if, I, if I'd been in training, say I had about, you know, when I was just doing the four and six <coughs> rounders, say I had, you know, like five fights close together. Yeah. And, I'd, and I'd, so I'd been in constant training and I'd not been 
down at us like to see me mates in the pub or anything like that. I was thinking, I bet they think I've got too big for myself, mate, father. I've got to go down and see him, but you know, and I didn't, <laughs> you know, me mates and me mates. But I, in my mind, I think, I bet they think I've got too big for me boots now. Get big in Ricky here on the TV He's now. People pleasing. So, yes, yeah, so, <laughs> so that, that's, if you think about it, that's a small, that's a small start of me being paranoid. And, oh, I've got to go down. I don't want people thinking I'm a dickhead. Yeah. I want to go down and see him. But then when the Mayweather defeat come and then falling out with my mum and dad and Billy and getting beat by Pacquiao, then it went wham. You know, so what, aside of your mates in your younger days, keeping them up there, all of a sudden, you fucking kept Manchester in the nation up there. Mm. So then you, when you when you got beat, <coughs> you must have thought, I've let everyone down. Exactly, exactly. Because when people <laughs> st t t tell me today, I'm still paying off for that five <laughs> And you know, and it, it's just, you know, it's never been done that, 40,000. 40,000 went to Vegas for me against Mayweather. 40,000 went to watch England in the World Cup. That'd be unbelievable. Yeah. 40,000 went to watch this fat little fucker. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's unbelievable. And when you've got that support in Vegas and you're being interviewed and you're in the ring and you're at press conferences and you just see that, it's just, it was like, it was still one of the, even a defeat, great one of the on great. Top. Yeah. Great when you're on top, but when you got the defeat, you must have thought, fucking, yeah, that's so 40,000 you know, people there, I've let down. The pressure, and it's like, you know, the, the, the pressure of trying to, Trying to please people, I was trying to please people from the from day one, like my mm -hmm. mates who my mates would have been my mates even if Ricky hadn't have done anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> but in my mind, that's what yeah. you think. And that's just, you know, it's as if boxing but I think that's the case with all people, you know, when they when they get given a, a talent or or something like that, they say, You can have that, but we're gonna take that away from you. Yeah. They've always it's as if you've all, we've all got a little Achilles heel. And that one was for someone who was so determined and strong-willed, there was just something in the back of my brain yeah. that just made me that little bit fucking weak, and and that's what it was. See, I don't like to diagnose anybody for having the same illness as me, but straight away I'm identifying with things that you're talking about. For me, it stemmed from a younger age, never feeling part of or always trying to please people, always trying to make people happy, so I felt part of something. I still do. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, when I, when I, you know, if I, if, if, if uh, if, if I'm, you know, if I'm out, if I'm out with my mates on a night out or I'm playing football for the vets, something like that, and my missus always says to me, "Oi, come off that stage, you." Yeah. It's like I'm always performing, trying to make, you know, when I do my sportsmen's dinners, yeah. when I used to fight and I used to win and I used to look in the crowd and see the, the joy I was giving people on the face. Go on, Ricky. Yeah. It's like when I do my sportsmen's dinners now and I tell a jagger go, they're joking. They're all sat there on the front row pissing themselves, man. I've always been a people, I've always wanted to, to do that. You know yeah, what I mean? What, what, if I open a night out with the lads and everything like that, you know, I'm always, I'm always feel like I'm performing. And they must think, fuck, oh, Ricky's fucking turn it in. Shut up with you, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I've always, I've always been that way and I'll always. Do you think you've suffered with like a low self-esteem? Yeah. And that's why you're so. Maybe, yeah, yeah probably, probably yeah. That's what we say. I yeah. can only refer back because to myself. I don't, because I mean, for someone that as, as confident as I come across socially, yeah. And you know, you know, when I'm doing my stand up or when I'm doing my boxing or the interview me, it's always a joke and a gag in here somewhere. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't I shouldn't I shouldn't suffer with the illnesses I have. You if you're looking for the mask on. So that's what it is, self esteem. It's like yeah, yeah. some I don't know, maybe I'm I'm trying to <laughs> use that in order to cover up my weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we say in in, um, <coughs> in addiction we we're so loud, me personally, I'm loud, I've got a big ego because I suffer with a low self-esteem. So that's why I'm very, trying to get attention, trying to be in the middle of everything. I can't just sit there and they got that social anxiety. So that's why, you know when they say Dutch courage, you have a drink, and all of a sudden, you've not got social anxiety, you're fucking yeah, all right. Yeah. So it's, and that can stem out of control. So every time you go out, Today I'm well, all you right. Great when you've had a couple, and then but then the next day you wake up, it's and it's dark. It's not gone anywhere. It's yeah. not still there. And you're having them suicidal <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, yeah. How often did they come? The suicidal thoughts. <coughs> um, worse. Pretty much most days, and it's worse when I used to have a drink. But I, sometimes I didn't need to to have a drink because I used to woke up, wake up in the morning, and I used to just think, oh, no gym today. What am I going to do? Yeah. You know, I'd watch a bit of TV, put Henry Carl on, have a bit of tea and toast, you know, sit down, what, you know, just nobody. And then minute it hit 12 o'clock, the fucking pub's open now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me days. And it's like, even 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 though before I'd even had a drink, you know, I was, yeah, wonder what my mum and dad's doing here now, wonder what Billy's up to there now. 
Because, I mean, Billy was, Billy suffered it the same as me. Yeah. We had all that great success. And when I started getting friends with Billy again, Billy said, oh, Rick, he said, for months and months and months and months and months, he said, I used to just sit with the curtain shut. Yeah. And depressed. just, I'm depressed on, you know, how, how it's, how it's gone and how it's ended up. I said, well, Billy, we're, we're fucking out the other end now, mate. So, you know, yeah. and Billy now is happier than he's, than he's, he's ever been, you know. So you've got a good relationship with Billy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, so it's, 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 su it's superb, but I mean, it, you know, and I've no doubt, you know, even though, you know, we had the argument and, you know, with my mum and dad, I've no, I've no doubt it was dark for them as well, you know what I mean? It's, you yeah. know, it's I think when we're in that lot, depression, a lot, lot, lot of snowballs, you know, yeah. off it, you know. I think when we're in that depression, it just feels like it's just us. And we get that self obsessed about our own depression. We don't, we don't think about anyone else. And it's just a poor me. That's what I was doing. Poor me and them bastards and this, hating on everybody, drinking on everything. Like you said before, you, you'll only drink uh, if you're in a good mood, you'll never do it in a bad mood. I was drinking on any fucking reason and I hated everyone. Um, and it was all to do with me. I, I yeah. couldn't stand what was going on in my thinking. Well, I was going out like um, every, <laughs> every, you know, I'd go out. Sometimes it'd be like, it'd be like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's like, that's, that's just like, Near enough, you know, and then I was dead come that come Monday, so I was I'm, I'm depressed. Mm. So then Tuesday, was, I just had Tuesday just to get myself, you know, you know, just to, just to calm to down, start get me, again. Yeah, to start, yeah, 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 to start again. And it's like, you know, she used to say, you know, my, my ex girlfriend at the time was, Who's going out? Who are you going out with? Who are you going out with? You know, I said, well, it's the, the usual crew, not the usual crew, they haven't got the money to fucking go out like you. Which not being not disrespectful when I when I say that, yeah. but you know I go out with one mate on a Wednesday, one mate on a Thursday. Do you fancy coming out Friday? Yeah. Do you two fancy coming out yeah, Saturday? Yeah, mate for every day of the week. Uh, every yeah, every yeah, day yeah. of the week. Yeah. And it, you know, and it's. I had that with the, the drugs and alcohol. I had me a bunch of mates <coughs> with the drink, but then obviously I had a, a dark side of people that was only having the drugs. So I'd see the drinkers for a few days. I'd be with the users for the other days. And then when I'd be coming around, for, I'd be back with them, and that's how my well, started you know, every I had, I had like day. I had like some mates, you know, where I could probably, I could probably, some people I was going out with, where they say they're only going out with because it's you and this, that, and all the rest of it. And they might be a truth with that, but I know some mates that were going out with me just to keep an eye on me. Yeah. Because if they turned around and said, no, I'm not going out with Ricky, no, he's, he's in a bad way. You know what I mean? For what could happen? I, I'd have gone out anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? It just so happened that I had, I'd have gone out anyway. But they were coming out. Yeah, I'm gonna go out. He's gonna. He's going out anyway. Him. So I'd rather be with him, yeah. keeping an eye on him. What turned all around? What What happened? It must it have been some totally, of I, I, I was suffering bad. Good, good days, bad days. Good days, bad days. As you know. And then um, my second um, child came along, Millie, and she wasn't planned or anything like that, and come pregnant and went to the hospital and she was born and he held her in my hands and then. I was still having good days and bad days, but I thought to myself, listen, at the end of the day, Ricky, you know, you you can't cope with it, you know, you you, you know, you've been doing this. I'll sort it out myself, I'll sort it out myself. Yeah. Listen, Rick, it's obviously it's clear you you've it's got like a problem. You just opened my mind up that little bit more to be a bit <coughs> more honest with myself. And I held me, me daughter in my arm there. And I didn't do it at first, because I thought to myself, oh great, you know, and once the honeymoon type thing of the daughter my daughter being born was over started going again and I said listen Rick you've got you've got a little baby girl now as well as Campbell yeah. you can't let this go down the down road and I was having down 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 and then I went to this you know and I just sort of threw my arms open to him I said listen I said I'm crying every day I don't know what it's up to I've got a new baby girl now I'm coming to you because I can't do it myself and I can't put you know Campbell was just young enough where he didn't quite see what was he knows now because he's, he's 18 now Campbell so he knows the history of you know what's been going on and, yeah. and what happened to me dad but when Millie had just come on I thought to myself I'm not doing the I'm not go, I'm not putting Millie through what Campbell knows about yeah, yeah. you know what I mean let's get this squashed and I threw my arms in front of the, the, the psychiatrist and went listen you've got to help me here because I can't do this and bit by bit it, it got got better you know what I mean and now you know I've got you know kids I've got grandkids you know I've got my lads that I'm training in the gym I go do my motivational speaking for milk and over do my sports and dinners. Me, 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 um, me diaries ran packed and probably big, busier now than when I was fighting. Yeah. You know, when I was fighting, at least when my fight finished, you know what I mean? I, I had a you know, few weeks off there now. Yeah. But now, every day of my life, I'm working and keeping myself busy. I'm doing, 
And like, I still go out for the pint with the lads every now and again. But if I'm in a bit of a bad mood, I don't go out yeah. because I know the way it's going to go. So you know, and, what, and, and, you I, know what and, I, and I know one day, one day, or you know, one day or two days at the very, very max. Yeah. But you know, when I talk about going on benders like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as we discussed before, if I did that now. I know I can't do that now. One, because I'm getting older and I don't want to do it. Yeah. But two, I know the mood it puts me in. That. So it's, yeah, it's short, sweet, you know, here and there. Uh, yeah. If I'm in a bit of a bad mood before the start, if you're in a bad mood, you don't go out on the beer, do you? And that doesn't, that's not if you've got a problem like we've got. Mm. If you're in a bad mood and you go out the beer, any of us, there's a chance it's going to go wrong, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So when you've got what we've got, that's a no. And it's just knowing how to deal with it a bit better, I think. But the biggest thing you've done was just fucking ask for help. If you wouldn't have asked for help, do you think uh, where do you think you'd be now? I'd probably be. Well, I might not be here because I mean it was getting that bad where I was wanting to kill myself every day. Get up in the morning crying, not even not even having a beer. Yeah. Get up in the morning crying, go in the pub, five pints, about five or six pints. Yay! Sold right. and party again. Yeah, yeah. But then once you had like another another couple more, then I started sitting in the corner of the, the pub going like that and I thought and you know and people you know that I've known me all my life from a distance let's get Rick home come on Rick get home come on are you going to be okay Rick you gonna be? and it's it's just um, it's a scary scary thought and it's a scary thought that there's people out there or kids or our youngsters that are on the streets of Manchester or, or, any, or anywhere in the country that are going through the same thing mm. because they will be they're out there yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean yeah. and it's you've got to just be man enough and say you know that you know can't do it on me own. Never be scared to you know, admit help. you've got help. Never be scared to think that there's somebody out there that might know better than you. Yeah. I mean, the minute we think we know it all and we know everything in this world, and the, you know we don't need no help with anything, you are fucked. Yeah. I, th I think the likes of yourself, uh, like uh, you know, mentioned with Frank Bruno, and we've just done an episode the other month with uh, Doreen Yates, and for like younger type to look at the likes of yourselves, you think never a problem. They fucking got it. They're all right. But the more that people like yourself talk about it, um, you know, it, it helps them massively because it encourages them. It, is, it encourages people to say, you know what, I'm fucking struggling myself with what he's talking about. I need help. Yeah, you, well, see, you know, nine, if you see me on my Insta, you know, nine times out of ten, you see me going on the bag every now and again, yeah, yeah. having a bit of a blast. I was watching you last night. Nine, you nine, still got it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nine times out, of, nine, nine times out of ten, that's pretty much if, if, if you know, I'm not having a really bad day. Or, or, but I might just stand with a little bit of a bit of a moment like you do. So you'd be fine the bags. I come to the gym and hit the bags a little bit, or I go for a run. Do you know what I mean? Everything like that. And then you come back, you s you, have, you get the shower, you sit down, you get a cup of tea, and you know you, you think I'm glad I did that. I feel ten feet so Because years ago, like Frank said to me, they, when Frank was having his bad days, and Frank got got sectioned and that. They used to just give him a pill or a yeah, drug, yeah, yeah. but all you're doing is just it's like like That's a pint. It. It's like a pint. Yeah. It just butters over. It just you know paints over the cracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it's still there. It's not going anyway. The only mm. way you can do it is by you know by actual doing something physical, like coming to the gym, hitting the bag, going for a run, go and sit down and have an hour talking to someone and go, what, what how's your day been, Rip? Why are you feeling like this? Yeah. Well, I've done this. I've done that. I've got this. I've done that. I've done that. You walk out of that room, you feel ten feet tall. Yeah. I go on there and do six rounds on the bags. I feel like I could take on fucking Gulliver. <laughs> it's you know, it, and it's, it's the way it is. You know, that's what you got. That's what I see my job as much as training the boys, as trying to bang that drum now. Because yeah. I mean, I might you know, when I think if I hadn't have opened my mouth, shinny, and gone to someone and said I can't help it, I can't do it, I can't do this, I wouldn't have made up with Billy and having all these good times with him now. I wouldn't have made up with my mum and dad and yeah, having yeah. all the good times now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have seen Campbell's daughter, my granddaughter, Lila, I wouldn't have had any of that shit. Yeah. So I'm telling you now, you know, before it's too late, you've got to, you've got to go out and say it, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100%. When you, you, you can only imagine is that, you know, when you boxed at, you know, Manchester Arena, you know, and I won my first world title against Costi Zoo, you know, one of the best wins in the British ring that they said it would be, and it is, you know, to win a fight like that, you know what I mean? Mm. There's only one, Ricky, and 22,000 at two o'clock in the morning. And then for everyone to travel over to Vegas, 40,000 May with a 20,000 Pacquiao, City of Manchester Stadium, 58,000 and stuff yeah. like that, you know? Walking down in Vegas, you just see Brits, Mancunians everywhere, singing, dancing, see all in fancy dress and everything like that. All, for you. all of a sudden, you know, when that's gone, yeah. 
You know, I'm not, you know, I mean, I've had my addiction with drugs and, and drink, but it doesn't matter how many pints you drink or how many drugs you take, you'll never, you'll never know what that feeling's like. Yeah. And when it's gone, what do you replace that with? You're never going to, you've got to try to replace it and you never fucking will. Yeah. But you've got to know what that drug feels like to be loved by so many people. Yeah. Singing your name, big crowds, this, that and all the rest of it. Once that's gone, you know what I mean? It's hard to keep, out. you can't blame me for not keeping you saying. You're searching for it then, that kind of fucking high again. Of course you would, and it's something you never find. You, but you, I think there's one thing is going talking about and just accepting it's never going to act again. But what can we do to try and make make it? It's never, it's never going to be replaced. You know, if you're playing for Manchester United, you know, you know, in front of you know seventy thousand every week, then you have to retire. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard to replace it. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to replace it, but you've got to do because otherwise, you know, where you end up is where we were. Yeah. Well, you true. You you're blessed to have all this, to have the kids, to have all your your fighters and stuff. Um, but not everyone's got that. That that's. That's, it's, it's worrying to see the, the athletes. I know, I know uh, a few rugby players that they fucking struggle bad uh, jumping off um, blocks and stuff like that, trying to kill themselves. <coughs> because there's, there's none of that aftercare. Um, you, you're, you, you're blessed with all this. Well, like you know, I when, I do, when I do, I'm an ambassador for Frank Bruno's mental health. I'm an ambassador for mental health, full stop. And I do my motivational speaking and I talk about in. That's my medicine now, helping others. Helping other people. Helping others. Yeah, yeah. Do you know when I, you know, if I put like a little video on Instagram, or I'll go doing a speak and I say something about this, and like five people will come up to me, or six or seven people after I've done my speech and go, Rick, that was, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stick to that. That tell you what, that's opened my eyes, that Rick. That's yeah. opened my eyes. Or when I look at the comments on my Insta, when I put something about mental health, yeah. just a quote, yeah. something just to get someone you know, back on top. Yeah. When you see the messages, you know, come down you know, like that, yeah. that's my medicine now. Yeah. And that's what I feel I'm, I'm here to do now, to train me lads, try and bring, you know, try and make, not just try and bring the champion through, try and make a better person of the lads I'm training with. It doesn't matter if they win one fight or 101 fights. I like to think I'm helping their, 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 them as a, as a person, not just their boxing. Yeah. And you know, it, it, that's what I see in my job now, trying to give somebody the life I did from boxing. When some of the lads say, oh, Rick, I've just bought a new car. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for that. Or pay me mortgage off, Rick. Cheers for that. Yeah. Or when I do my mental health speaking and I say, it's nice one, Rick. Thanks for that, Ricky. Oh, that's really hit home, that. I can relate to that. Thanks a lot. You know what I mean? That's my job now. But it, it's infectious. Like yeah, young Luke before, um, he said the same. It, it's lovely, isn't it, Shin to walk, because obviously, Everything that I do, I found that by helping other people, that was helping me get well. And I call it my medicine. If I'm not out every day doing talks or helping other people in recovery, I start to get, not, I say like a bit poorer. I don't feel as good because I'm all about myself then, self-obsessed. And I think that's what the problem is today, is self-obsession phones. It's all about you, you, you. And, and the, the more kid, people- The kids are at an early age, it starts now, doesn't it? You know, with social media and you know, you know, it's, it's, you know, like, you know, I know some some kids, you know, that, that, that I know, you know, teenagers and everything like that, they're getting upset because they think they look fat on their Instagram yeah, and, yeah. and stuff like that. They've not you know, had too many likes it, and stuff yeah, like that. It's, All that gratification yeah, again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's scary it's, stuff. It's scary. Yeah. And that's why it's just important, you know, to try and, you know, not everyone listens, but I mean, you know, if, you know, 30% of them listen, then we're, we're doing something, you know, you can't, you can't, you know what I mean? I, I just say, listen, you've got to fill, fill your time, you know what I mean? I've, you know, I, I work very hard for what I've got. I had good times, I had bad times. But when I sit, you know, in this gym now and I, and I see what I've got with my family and, you know, where and everything like that, you don't do it by getting, getting pissed and you don't do it by taking drugs and you don't do it by buying the, you know, you know, you've got to, you've got to do something and focus something on you. You like, you like your schoolwork. You've got to just give everything your hundred hundred percent. You know, you you'll be out there now. These eighteen, nine year, nineteen year olds having a pint and having a line and having a this and having a that. Mm. You'll still be doing that when you're fucking fifty, unless you look for something, something to you know to channel channel your your time. You yeah. know what I mean? And that that's the that's the top and top and bottom of it. You've got to you know it's it's when you're with your mates and have nothing better than having a you know a laugh and a good time and a good giggle and the banter 
with your friends and all that you know i still do it but you know what i mean you know you you know you want to be able to look back and say look at what i've done instead of doing the same things you were doing when you were 20. yeah and now you can yeah i can now imagine if if you wouldn't have done that first thing by asking for help knowing that you were struggling because yeah. exactly the same i just said i can't fucking do this i don't know what i don't know what's going on well you know and i hope people listen i hope people look and say you know what ricky you know i'm going to take that on board i'm going to do that because you know and you know a lot of them won't because I me mean, my, my my dad told me when i was a kid i used to think shut the fuck up dad you know what you're going on about and you do but i mean I, but one but one thing i say my dad said the same thing to me and you know i and i nearly i got away with it but i nearly didn't yeah yeah, but a lot, a lot of kids listen to, um, they don't listen to the dads. I never would have took it That's any notice. Yeah. I wouldn't have listened to a teacher, but I'd listen to me. I'd listen to you. Um, my son listens to me mm. from what I talk yeah, today. That, that's what they do. And that's the way forward because, I mean, you, you, you know, you tell it's only because of past mistakes. Yeah, life experiences. Life experiences. That's what we, we know we're telling you. So, yeah. And we can never control anyone. All, that, all we can do, I think, is lead by example. Mm. And I think the way you turn it around, um, it's fucking it's bob on because it's it's obviously working like i said before luke's saying the same things what you're talking about it's all about helping others in it and it is it is today that we're so self-consumed and self-obsessed with this today um social media and stuff that we're forgetting everybody else and we're, we're so concerned about how's everything going for us um but yeah if, if we can promote anything from, from what you talk about and me it's just helping other people giving up other people a bit of a nudge a bit of guidance um, but you'll only listen to people that have had real life experience. I could not probably get well by talking to a doctor, but give me an alcoholic that's lived through it and now he's sober today. He's got my attention because he's got someone that I want then, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think I think it's great what you're doing. And the more you're doing it, the better. Yep. We need well, Frank Bruno next, don't we? <laughs> yeah, Frank will come on and do it any time. Yeah. Might have to shoot up to London and do it, but Frank, Frank, yeah, is, Frank is one of the... You know, I think the reason why mental health has become such, you know, um, because, you know become of, yeah, become of such importance is because of Frank. Because Frank was probably one of the initial sports stars when Frank, you know, got poorly. When it really and come when out it, in the open, didn't really, it? That's when it started. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Frank's kicked it on. Yeah, yeah. Frank, Frank was the one that got it all going and got people talking about that. I think mental health is is what it is today and the awareness of what it is today is because of Frank Bruno because someone of his, yeah. of his stature Absolutely. has come out he and said I've fucking so, yeah, yeah. he was the first one and now more and more are doing it yeah. and the more people like Frank's and myself that can do it the better we'll all be yeah this helped me massively through my darkest times um what's your favorite tv series <laughs> is that a serious question <laughs> Oh, my, my favourite uh, TV series, well, apart from yours, obviously. Uh, <laughs> it's your life. <laughs> is uh, Only Fools and Horses. Did that get you through some dark times? Pardon? Did it get you through some dark times? Yeah, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I've had a, had a few nights kipping in that van when my fucking missus wouldn't let me in. <laughs> He's got his own van, his own fucking Only Fools and Horses, and horses van. van. And, you know, I'd be out on a piss on the piss or whatever, and I'd lose my key, and yeah. she'd find me in the morning in the back of the trotter van like that <laughs> i only went in because the blow up doors were in the back but you know um but no, <laughs> but no um it's it's you know it's good i mean only fools and horses i mean something like that when you're in a bad mood yeah stick with only fools and horses on yeah, you're not up. telling me you know even kids even my kids my yeah. kid campbell he's 18 now but he when he was four, 11 12 13 he loved only fools and horses yeah. do, s- do something that makes you happy yeah, yeah, yeah. Do something. That's a prime happy. example, isn't it? Yeah. So if you are struggling with food, drink, alcohol, you know, drugs, and you you tend to watch only fields and horses a lot, you might have a few things going on, <laughs> a few problems. <laughs> no, but uh, it, it's right that we'll end it on that. It's uh, anything that can make you happy. Find things that make you happy, really. If it could be through exercise, helping other people, that's where I find it today. Um, and whatever works for anyone else, isn't it? Hundred percent. Yeah, it's been great today, Rick. Thanks for having me, Jim. It was easy. No no problem. It was easy. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers, Rick.